One. Welcome back to MMA Oddsbreaker. Uh, I'm Frank Triggs, sitting here in Las Vegas. On the other end of the Skype call today, we have Rafael Oliveira. He's getting ready to fight Ensign Barboza at UFC 162 here in Las Vegas, July 6th. Of course, the main event for that fight is uh, Anderson Silva, Chris Weidman. Um, Rafael, how you doing today? I'm doing great, Frank. Thanks for having me here in the program. I'm doing great. Thank you. Uh, I talked to uh, Mike, and he said that you were sitting on his couch. Are you staying at his place, Cassiano's place, or is, was it just that moment when I talked to him that you happened to be there? Yeah, I, I'm. he's my manager, bro. Also, he's a good friend of mine, too, so I always stay in his house. So I'm on his couch right again, too. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> uh, how, how is it staying at your manager's house? Because sometimes it gets a little hectic where he's also, he's got an investment in you. He's, you know, he, he's your manager, so he's invested in what you're doing. Go, makes you go to bed on time, makes you get up, makes you eat, makes you, you know, does he put you on a tighter schedule because you're at his place? Is he too involved sometimes? No, not really. He's really laid back. He just, uh, I feel really comfortable here. You know, I feel like my second house. Like he makes me feel really, unco- really comfortable here. So uh, I'm just stay. I'm just training all the time. And when I'm not training, I'm here relaxing, watching TV or hanging out with talking to him. You know, it's pretty, it's pretty good. I love it. Who uh, who are you training with right now? Who's in there every day as you as you're going through your practices? Uh, I have a lot of guys coming. Uh, we tr- I train a lot of wrestling right now with Jared. He's a really good wrestler. He's 185. Uh, he just started professionally fighting, okay. but he helps. I, I know he helps like few Davids with wrestling. Uh, Jim Miller's been training. Uh, we have Brian. One guy Brian's a black belt. He's really good jiu jitsu. Uh, we have Andy Mann. We have Shorty Rock. We have Mike Medrano. Oh, wow. We have so much, yeah, so much good guys. Uh, you know, I was, no matter what day you go, you have, I always have a lot of guys to push yourself, you know. Hafiello, break down Edson Barboza for me. Like, how do you see him as an opponent, and what does he bring in, bring in that you haven't seen before in a fighter? I think he's, bring, he's bringing a really dangerous kickboxing tight uh, game. You know, that's his game. Uh, good cardio, uh, fast. Good. At, he's an athlete. Uh, he's a great fighter. You know, I think he's a great fighter. You know, he's tried to avoid the takedowns, and he always he want to have that knockout. You know, really dangerous kicks. So, I'm looking for him for this challenge. What of the guys that you're training with, Jim Miller and, and Jared and the rest of the guys? Do any of them actually mimic Edson's style so that when you go in there, that you've seen it before? Who, who's mimicking his style we, right now? Yeah, everybody who has been sparring with me tried to get the right hand, stay the right hand, uh, and try to kick me a lot. You know, that's you know, that's thinking I'm gonna see in the fight. So, all my training partners has been doing a great job uh, trying to copy him. You know, so they all the, all those guys, even those guys, they're not good kickers. They're trying to kick me, and you know, and just stay in the striking and don't let them me take them down and banging and keep the distance so everybody's been doing a great job trying to call him all right your last fight was ufc 148 and you beat uh yosilani escriado um in a decision but let's go back to three fights ago you lost to uh, gleason table you got caught in a, in a rear naked choke um in, this, in the middle of the second round i was back at ufc 130 uh what happened do you remember what happened during that during that fight that was a long time ago that was back in may no, of yeah, 2011 i know what, exactly what happened there was a I think there was a short notice fight. Uh, I have a fight in like a week, and I accept it. Uh, my cardio was good, but you know we we're a fighter uh, also, and you know your cardio is good, but sometimes you know in cardio shape. So in my mind, I should just say like you know whatever. I'm gonna go and give the fans what give the fans what they come to see, and if I get tired, whatever it is, what it is. Yeah. But uh, in the first round, second round, second, first round was a pretty close. I believe it was close. I think maybe he won because he took me down a couple of times, and I I stand up back up. I hit maybe I won a little bit more. I I, I punch him more. In the second round, I kind of slowed down a little bit, but I wasn't. I I stopped pushing. I was worried about my cardio. I okay. think I fought I fought bad because of that. I should just like you know, fuck it, let's go. You know, yeah. and I didn't, and that was my mistake. And uh, I just the, the the experience for the fight was. You know, try to push all the limit. If you get tired, whatever. And I got cut. He caught me uh, in the clinch with an uppercut. 
in the second round, I didn't saw coming, and he did a great job oh. to finish the fight. Okay, all right, that, okay, that makes a lot more sense because I was wondering how you would get caught. I, I understand how good Gleason is, but I didn't think he would catch you with a rear naked choke, so I was kind of confused on how you got caught. But now yeah, it makes was, sense. I was, short yeah. fight. Yeah. I, he cut me for uppercut, and I was dizzy. I I kind of wake up. He's punching me, and I gave the back. Yeah, and that was already. You know, that was my mistake. Uh, he saw the bloody. He was like a good shark. You know, he saw yep. the shark. He's, he got that night, you know. Now, you fought Eve Edwards right at, you know, shortly thereafter. You fought him in October of 2011. That was on UFC Live 6. And you lost to him by TKO and punches. Um, and that was in the second round as well. What happened during that fight that caused you to get caught by Eve's? Second round, first, I won the first round, and mm. I was in great shape. I had a great, great training camp. First round, I was so confident I won the stand-up. In the second round, I might have, and when I went to the corner, I was like, man, I won't lose this guy. No way I lose this guy. And I keep pushing, I keep pushing. My card was good. So I should try to go more take him down or put him in the cage, and I keep stand-up with him. And he caught me for a weird punch in the top of the head, and he knocked okay. me down once. I stand up, he knocked me down again twice, I stand up again, and I thought I was safe, and I was like, okay, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, I thought I was safe, and I come back to bang again, and he knocked me down again the third time, and in that time, I was like, all right, I lost this round, let's just relax and move, and I didn't have that experience, never happened before with me, and then, when he caught me there, he finished the fight, uh, I, I was a knockout, but I remember in my mind, you know what it is. I, in my mind, I was trying to do something, but my body was an answer. So that was oh, what happened. Okay. And, the, and the referee stopped the fight. So that was a TKO. And, you know, I think that was a big mistake in my career. But uh, make me a better fighter. Like, I have that experience. Like, if you get cut, a good punch. And if you get dizzy, just try full work. Relax a little bit. Don't try to bang right away, you know. See, and, and that's the thing. The reason why I was asking you, because I talked to Mike a little bit, I talked to some other guys about you, because I've never interviewed you before, so I wanted to, wanted to know. And they said that, that he'll explain a loss, but he never makes an excuse. Like a lot of guys will go, oh, you know, yeah, I lost that fight. Uh, um, it was a short-notice fight. I wasn't in shape. It was, uh, but instead of you relying on, oh, it was a short-notice fight and making an excuse for it, you're like, no, I came out there to try to please the fans. I tried to give them what they wanted. I won the first round. Going into the second round against, uh, against uh, 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 Gleason, I didn't put it all out there, and I got caught, and I got beat, and that's it. Like you're, you're very manufactural, and there's not that many fighters that are like you. What they do is they try to make an excuse for why they lost. Like it's never their fault. It's the bad training camp. The coaches didn't tell me what to do. But you always own up to what you have, what you've done wrong, and what you've done right, and then you move on to it. So that's why I asked you those, those, those questions about you losing those last, those two fights, uh, three fights ago, and two fights ago, and then against uh, Yusalandi, you look great. That whole the whole fight, you looked really good, all three rounds. What was different between the Eves fight and the Yosilani fight? Because you grew a lot between the loss to Eves Edwards and and then beating uh, Yosilani. What happened during that time to to kind of make you develop and grow? Uh, you know, I work a lot of wrestling for the fight. I have a great training camp too. But I a lot of people don't know, I kind of broke my hand like two or three weeks before the fight. So I couldn't, I couldn't stand up a lot. So I had to wrestle with him. Mm -hmm. So my cardio was, thank God, I work a lot of cardio, a lot of strength, and I was able to work my wrestling. You know, okay. I don't like that fight. I wish I could finish, but that was what I had to do to win that fight. You know, wrestle with the guy. Don't try to stand up. Try to wrestle, wrestle, grind, grind. And thank God I got the win. And that was what happened. Uh, and you know, just sometimes you. Like you MMA fighter, you forget about where you came from because you, you're fighting for a big show and you, you're looking for the big dollars and you want to have the fight at the night or knock out at the night and you, you want to give for the fans what they want. They want to, you know, they, they want to stay there and bang. Some fans don't even like the, the, the good striking technique. They just like you go there and brawl. Right. So some, but sometimes you just got to like, no, I got to get the win. I got to do everything to get the win. So I got to push and do my game. So I did my game, you know, try to take him down, wrestle, grind, ground and pound. But thank God I got the victory and, uh, because my hand was really bad. All right, good. good. Last question before I let you out of here. Uh, Anderson Silva or Chris Weidman, who's going to win the fight? 
I think it's a great fight. Everybody's asking. I think Anderson Silva is going to win. Uh, now, is that because is that because he's Brazilian? You're picking Anderson Silva, or do you think he's actually the better of the two guys? I think he's unpro- unpredictable. He's Brazilian. as a big fan. I met the guy. I think the guy is awesome guy, and I'm a bigger fan of him. I think Chris Whitman. He had the tools to 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 win that fight, but Anderson Silva, man, you don't know what he's gonna. You know, you don't know what's gonna happen. And I think he got the experience. He got the skills. He got a technique, you know. He's humble, and he's a great fighter, you know. And he, when he, when it's time to shine, he's always shine, you know. Beautiful. Well, Hafiello, I really appreciate you coming on here. Good luck against Ensign Barboza at UFC 162, July 6th. Thanks for coming on, and we'll definitely interview you again. We'll talk to you soon. All right, Frank Trigger. Appreciate, it, brother. Have a great day.